This week on a very coherent episode of the Uninteresting Car Show, we talk about BMW's attitude towards car naming. We make fun of a Hyundai press video. I get excited about Cadillac once more. We talk about a cool hill climb car. And that's about it. So, stick around, try and keep up, stay tuned. Um, this episode brought to you by a second Yeti mic because we were filming the automation video and I totally forgot to bring my mic over and so I was like, fuck it, I don't feel like driving to where my other mic is so I just went to GameStop <laughs> And I bought a second Yeti mic. This is the blackout one, though, so it's all black. I would also like to point out, although this is technically not the intro, but we will probably start with this. As David was saying that, I looked out the window. We're in a two-story house. Um, and, you know, looked out the window, and down the driveway was backing a Nissan Kicks. And I was so overcome with rage, I had to stop speaking. Anyway, welcome to this episode. <laughs> My David, what do you want to talk about? Fuck. There it is. Found my drink. Okay. <laughs> so, David... I, I have... This is going to be so long. Let me just finish this. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Alright. Anyway. We were uh, talking so, about... So, David just knocked back a fucking... <laughs> uh, so, what is it? Sukoliva? Sokolova. 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 He just aggressively knocked back half a glass of Sokolova, so it's, this could be entertaining. This was meant to. I was meant to sip on this throughout it, but I realized the jangling is probably going to be. Super the ice is not going to be the greatest. I just. I'm having stoli, so. Okay, we were talking about how, <laughs> you know, those the just a second ago in the car we were talking about how, um, what the hell do they call it? The tint like lines. The what? dart parts on top? Oh, yeah, the tent lines in cars. Yeah, yeah. And so you saying that, like, there was ones that just say, like, Civic on it or something. Oh, yeah. And you're like, ooh, Civic. Okay. And so I, I found this article. Why is it called a Civic? This is on car throttle, so, I mean, I don't know how accurate it is. Well, you know, <laughs> it will get us halfway there. Uh, Hansa used the definition of Civic, which is something related to or benefits an individual citizen. It can de- be described as a Civic. It's, it's like that's it it's literally like it, it feels like a definition for like the fundamental rights of a human you should be able to transport yourself from one place to another and so they make the most basic car that can do that and that's the civic so does that mean if i have a car like that if i even if i don't live in the u.s or maybe it's specific to the u.s i have the rights of what is it property oh fuck i can't even remember it <laughs> happiness Oh my god. Um, we should cut all this out. Let, We're, this is like anti-American. We're fine. <laughs> but what I'm saying is... Life, civic, liberty, and pursuit of pursuit, happiness. Yeah. Well, life, liberty, and property, property is John Locke. But that's not technically in the Constitution or whatever. So I don't really know the Constitution all that well. Well, so. you know, it happens. The So um, anyway, the Civic is like the Japanese people's car. Yes. In my mind. It's, it's equivalent to like how the Beetle was. Mm-hmm. You know? So. Well, then what do you... I just love that this has come from a conversation. Okay, so say it is the Japanese people's car. If if they can kind of make that plain, can, will, that mean that, will that mean that teenagers will stop putting stupid, like... Oh, what's that stuff? Wow, this is a great episode already. <laughs> so much is going to have to be cut out. <laughs> Excellent work. If it's the people's car, does that mean that teenagers are allowed to or not allowed to put those big sticker banners on the front of their car that say Civic when they're off-center and kind of faded? How I mean, do you feel about that? Is that good do, or bad? You can do whatever you want. I just, right. like, there. there's a really big following behind the Civic, right? And yes, it's, like, by name, by definition, it is, like, a base car. It is, yes. it is like, an entry level. But I get that it's different now than what it used to be. It right? is. It's they're not even their nicer, entry level you know? anymore. It's, like... It's not yeah, you're right. They go, oh, would you like it? How about a Honda Fit? A Fit, yeah, that's what it is. That's like. the people's car. I wonder why they chose that name. I don't know. It's called the Honda Jazz in Europe, which I think is a way better that's name. Way, that's like way that better name. More. What I do you drive? Why. I drive a Honda Jazz. Dra- you like jazz? <laughs> <laughs> it got me thinking about car names. Right? Yeah. 
a lot of them don't make any sense. But no. it's like, do you prefer a name or do you prefer, prefer like the German letters and numbers kind no, of thing? No, I don't. I, I wish know? cars had more interesting names because it just kind of takes the fun out of it. Like, I, I drive a Golf. Yes. And I know that, name's come, that name comes from some other stuff. So there's, well, there's heritage in it. It's been around for, God, 40 years or something yeah. like that now. And I know that name came from, you know, Golf, like a wind. And then Shiroko is the same oh. thing. It's like a wind. They had that for a while. I'm not sure if all their cars are named like that. But I prefer to cars. I prefer for cars to have names. Is Unless the, they're stupid names, like a Nissan Kicks. Anyway, I is digress. Is Tiguan a type of wind as well? It was a... Oh, man, what is it? What if I remember beetle? correctly... <laughs> well, Beetle was there because it looks like a Beetle. My mom is a Tiguan. <laughs> that um, one's very, like, on the nose. Yeah, that one's pretty on the nose. Looks yeah, like they a call beetle. it a K-Fire. Beetle. Yeah. My mom's, like my mother, I've mentioned before, is a Tiguan, and I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, I think it's it's kind of the English or German words, like they're close enough, but if I remember correctly, this may be way off pace, but mm-hmm. it was supposed to be the combination of the words tiger and iguana. <laughs> and I don't know if that's what? right, this but for some reason, of a tiger and iguana. but for some reason, would you not say that kind of fits? I personally don't see There's something about it. I'm like, yeah, iguana. What would yeah. they even look like? Would it like be the medium between the two sizes of the animals? So it'd be like a, a dog like size. Yeah, yeah, it'd be like a dog sized thing. <laughs> Fuck, I drew my phone. Nice. It'd be like dog sized, but reptilian. And it would roar. And yeah. And have fur. It'd be made by Germans. Wouldn't, I don't wouldn't know. I don't know where some of these names come from. I mean, they have other cars. They have like. They have a car called the T Rock, which I think uh-huh. is coming here soon. It's like a little crossover thing. Really? Whatever. I don't know. Interesting. I see. Having names is cool, but I think I would appreciate the letter and number approach more if it was more consistent. Because yeah. BMWs, it was consistent for a while. Yeah. But then it's, it's not like anymore. not the displacement anymore. But it's it's the class. Equivalent it's of class is what it is. Class is what they Isn't call it. Isn't the same? You go. You pull up someone, someone has a 320i, a 330i, and a 340i. Mm-hmm. You look at it and you go, person with a 340i, you know they're, they're well-to-do. 320i, well, they're just starting out. But, you know, they're just not they're just not there yet. I just, That's what it is now. That's what they're making it I into. I want it's, it to be displacement. <laughs> no, I know, because they're all two liters. They're all two liters? Sorry, not the not the, uh, not the 340, because I think it's a three and a half or three. Wow, I don't even remember for sure, but it's a, it's a six. But the thirty, the twenty, and the thirty, which they don't even make the twenty anymore, because it used to be three twenty i, three twenty eight i, three thirty five i. It might be a three and a half liter. Because okay. I think the old one was a three liter, so it might still be a three liter. Mm-hmm. And they just did that to make it. They've done a lot of that though. What they'll do is if the if it matches the displacement, but they need a car to be lower yeah. or like or more of a break between the two for sense of sales and marketing, they uh-huh. will do that. I so hate it. Yeah, <laughs> but for instance, so I had a I had an E46 and it was an early one. I mentioned this before, but they had a two and a half liter straight six and a two point eight liter straight six. Mm. So instead of calling it the three twenty five and three twenty eight, mind you, this was only for like a couple of years. Yeah, they called it the three twenty three i and the three twenty eight i. Yeah, because there's point five between them still. Yeah, but when they changed the, to the new engines, it was two five and three actually because they just sleeved the engine differently. It's, yeah. But yeah, no. The thing is, though, yeah, I was gonna say some of them make sense because the Mercedes ones is the same kind of thing. But so they have they have the I suffix yes. for fuel injection, right? That's what it started as, and then it started to mean inline. But they all are, even if it's a six Just or a four. Drop the I. What was the C? C was coupe and or convertible. Sometimes it was capitalized. Sometimes it wasn't. Then they have L. Long wheelbase, that makes sense. Okay, okay. <clears throat> you know, you have a 750 Li. Why can't they do the T? The T? Something, something T for turbo, you know? Because instead of, know. like, changing, like, oh, 320 to three, 335, cause it's, but it's the same displacement, but this one, like, makes more power. But, like, a T for turbo. Or do all of them have turbo? Well, no, they used to do that, because they used to have a 328 on the E90s okay. and a 335. And they were the same engine, one was turbocharged. Same three liters. One just had twin, or is a twin scroll thing. Just, this is delving into. I know way too much. No, I know. I don't know. They I don't can do know. A lot it's of that just stuff. like they used to have X as well. Gonna, if you're gonna do this approach, be yeah. consistent. Well, that they used to have I mean. X, but then they changed it. 
Because it used to have, it, you could get like an E30. Yeah. One I really wanted to get a, a 325iX, I think. The and X then they used to sense. Then they started switching the letters and always having the I as the suffix. Okay. Around the 2000s. Because that Because you can, instead of a 325i... X, it would be a 325XI because you want to keep this suffix at the end. But then what they started doing is they go, well, we'll change it. So instead of a 320XI, it's a 320i X drive, and you get little X drive badges down the side because it's all wheel drive. I think this is why some people hate BMWs is because they're not consistent. They're like, no. You can look at it, and unless you know what you're doing, you just go, that is a BMW. The point of the letters and numbers is so that it describes the car well. Yes. But when they change it all the time, it doesn't make sense. And then I no. and then I hate it. Yeah. So and now, we'll, so now, now they I have, have e... to know like the whole etymology, yeah. the whole history of the car, to know what all these letters and numbers means. And when they changed it over from this convention to that convention. And now I doesn't even mean inline, because now it means eco. Because there's a BMW i3, i8, oh, and i4 is coming out. But then those are different than the 430i or the 430e, which I don't think they make. I don't think they make an electric-assisted 4 Series, but they do have the 3 Series. And then you can also have a D for diesel. Jesus. But it's you don't mess. have DI, even though it is inline. It's a diesel. It's a mess. I don't. And then I was supposed to mean petrol, but then they used to have an E, which used to mean Einspitzung, which was injection. But they didn't really do that. That was another company. I know too much. It's and it's completely boring. But yes, this it's it's the state of car names because I do like bringing them back again. What okay. Genesis do? Yes, it's a G seventy. You know what size it is. You know what car it is, and it just says two point T, two point T Sport, three point three. There you go. That so makes it, sense. It's two separate. Badges. It's just you know G for Genesis, seventy for size. Yes, and then you just say what the engine is. Yeah. Because at this point, it's like the displacement doesn't because there's turbochargers and stuff and. Whatever, you know, just describe the end. But things can be even different, because you can have a... I think you can have a 340i, or you can have an M340i. Yes. Which is not an M3. a full M3. No, it's an M Sport, which is now like a middle tier, which is kind of what Cadillacs were doing. I'm bringing them up again, and I will in a minute, because some of their stuff they're doing is really cool, but they're doing the same thing with like this tiered... Oh, you get normal, and then kind of sport, and then real sport. You know... BMW should follow in Hyundai's suit and just be like BMW three, <laughs> and then describe the engine afterwards. Well, that's what they do. Oh, you made a separate. Yes. So just I, instead of so, three so to eight. we're not having to just to, to decrypt what like thirty five means. Yes. Does that mean like a two liter turbo? Does that mean it's actually three and a half liters? Or what? What does it mean? And then you have like the I. You you want something else that's kind of like boring but i know about they Absolutely. used to have the letters they used to have the numbers switched so yes. you've heard of a 2002 yes yeah. it was a two liter o2 no way okay and it wasn't necessarily a two series but i think it was like it had two doors mm-hmm. so you get but you could also have like an 1802 that was a car or a 1602 same oh. car different engine that's interesting. But then they so flipped weird. it when they came out with the quote unquote new class they called it when they went 357 they and then you make another like that. new class and just have them by their nose. I mean, the they redid BMW their logo. 3. They redid their logo, so I don't know. It's probably going to change to BMW i3, they, i4. They redid I, their logo? Yeah, they took all the color out of it. It's still colored on the center, but the black around the edge is gone, and it's like a hollow thing. Apparently, people are up in arms. I don't know why anyone cares. Like, Volkswagen said, we're doing the same thing, and they just made their font thinner. <laughs> and it's the same logo. It's basically the logo they had in the 70s. Controversial. But, yeah, controversial or whatever. Um, but yeah, it stuff like that. I don't know why people get upset by car badges changing, but whatever. This is this is really in line with the uninteresting part of the uninteresting car podcast. <laughs> yes, it is. Let's just talk about BMW news for a long time. Sorry, you got <laughs> us all into this. Another interesting thing that I thought about. Okay, so the TVR cigars, yes. my favorite car is probably my like dream car. Yes. It also holds the record for the highest horsepower naturally aspirated inline six engine. You should see what I can build. An automation. <laughs> right. But that car has been around for a while now. Mm-hmm. And no one's really making naturally aspirated inline sixes anymore. And it makes me think, will that record ever be broken? I don't know. If it were, if it were to be... I doubt it. I don't you know. know. Who would do it? Unless it turns into a thing where, you know, in time, as everyone says, we're all going to be driving electric cars and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Then someone who's making one-off petrol cars, maybe... However, I don't know. Do you think BMW would ever return to naturally aspirated inline sixes and make a big one that makes a lot of power? 
I don't know, because the problem is now you get so much more efficiency yeah. by putting turbos on it mm-hmm. and going with smaller displacement and then doing electric assist to like all their cars have it yeah. in some way, shape, or form, which also helps with it and kind of with all that because they have to regulatory wise chase and make these economy goals. Mm-hmm. I don't know. If they can make it really efficient and really cheap, if they did something like with free valve and stuff like that, perhaps. Yeah. But with all their tech, they might just combine the two. It's like, you know, if you can make this thing, why wouldn't you make like a two liter four that can make more power, mm-hmm. have less parts or have fewer parts, you know, be easier to maintain, be more efficient, be, ch- you know, cheaper and all this stuff. Yeah. As a company, it's kind of, it kind of makes sense to do that. Oh, especially because the vast majority of people don't care. Yeah. I mean, it definitely makes sense. I just, it was a thought I had. And I was like, I don't know if that record's ever going to be broken. And I wonder what other records are never going to be broken just because they're... Yeah. We've kind of passed that We're living in a weird era with stuff like that. Yeah. So it's like... TVR maybe makes do you it. Think, Who knows? Th- this has long been passed, but what was the most powerful carbureted engine ever made? Oh, God. You I know? have no what idea. What would it be? It'd be pre-emissions. So it'd be pre-70s and stuff like that. I mean, you know, you've got these 8-liter V8s making... Yeah. less than 200 horsepower well, probably not but you know we talked there about there some like on. muscle cars that made you know like 400 something yeah there were a lot and there might have been some exotics that i yeah, really don't know the whole timeline on when they stopped carbureting that you know some v12 that lamborghini or whatever made yeah made exactly I'm not sure. i don't know when they switched over to not being carbureted because i bet by the time of the gosh i might be completely off base but i bet by the time of the countach they were injected right Oh, no, the Countach had... It was carbureted? Oh, my God, it had sequential carburetors. <laughs> yeah. Can you, ma- can you imagine trying to sync them all up? <laughs> That's good. Every time you go in for a service. Oh, and I don't remember, it's, I think, six. I think yeah. it has six of them. I don't think it's 12, I think it's six. There's not one per cylinder, I think there's one per two cylinders. Even if it's not, it's a lot. And the Countach definitely had that for, I think, the vast majority of its life before the Diablo came out. I wonder... Do you, I, I feel like, do you remember that Lamborghini, oh gosh, I forget which model it was, but Lamborghini for, like at the beginning of its life, it was a real drive. And then they switched to all wheel drive with like Audi stuff. Yeah. And then they had this one off where they went rear wheel drive again. Yeah. It was for, do you remember which model it was? I think it was Gallardo. Was it? Gallardo? And they made a special edition that was rear wheel drive yeah. only. And it was one of those, you know, kind of the lightweight sort. Yeah. I, it might've been. I don't think it was Balboni. It had a different name. I know it had a stripe. Balboni. That's all I, know. I do remember the it stripe. It had a stripe. Well. Because that sounds like I'd brand a sausage. No, <laughs> it does. I think it was some name of someone, though. I it want was. To say that was it was. I, I remember it was, it was like, like some Balboni. race car driver. And he yeah, yeah, yeah. Like liked Real Wheel Drive or something, and they named it after him. And then they made it. It was lighter. It had a bit more power. They kind of took some of the stuff you don't need away. Yeah. Rear wheel drive only, manual, with like an actual, you know, manual box, not a DCT. It was a pretty cool car. Mm-hmm. I don't think they made that many of them, but I mean, they don't make that many cars comparatively anyway. Yeah. I wonder if BMW would make like a like a special edition of like the 3 series that was like how they how the old 3 series were and put like a big honk in in line 6 in it. That'd be great if they did because like I said, if if they could redo the tooling, the biggest thing is making the crash safety work, but if they could get some kind of thing redo the tooling for the E46 or the M3, they would oh, sell wow. a ton. They would yeah, sell really so many, so. especially if it was at a lower price mm-hmm. for enthusiasts and stuff like that. That'd be cool. I don't know, because I know they had some cool later cars that were around the same time as the turbocharged cars still had the old tech. Because mm-hmm. I think that they did a Z4M coupe, okay. and I think it had the S54 from the E46 M3. Oh, that's I, cool. It, okay, they're kind of rare, but if you find one, really not that much money for what you get. Yeah. I want to say there was one I saw that was under 20k and it didn't have that many miles and it was in pristine condition. Hmm. And I realized that's like, as far as cars are concerned, yeah, it's still less than 20k, but I mean, that's less than a lot of other stuff. You know what I mean? Like a Golf GTI is what 30 new, that's, you know, and it makes more power and it's and you have to want like that kind of car. end of an era kind of car. Yeah, and they made is. it way later because normal, you know, it takes them a while to come up with the new car and then replace yeah. it and then they use old stuff and then yeah. I know the original. Um, 1M mm-hmm. that came out when they had the 1 Series and they made the M, the the M car. It had parts from like three different BMWs and they just kind of shoved them in there. <laughs> like it was yeah. like the rear diff out of an E90. I think it was the engine out of like, it might have been the old, I don't think it was the old S54, but it was like an 
just a bigger straight six. It had, you know, mirrors from like a M3 or stuff like that. And it was just, they kind of threw a bunch of stuff They're together, but it worked that, really yeah. well. Well, you know, if all your stuff's kind of the same, yeah, just like, go in the parts bin. The 36 Compact had the rear suspension of the E30. Yeah, which is very good for being tail happy. So that, oh, that's, yeah. that. it was like, from what I've read, it was significantly lighter than the 36 as well. Mm -hmm. That's a really good drift missile if yeah. you like want to salt the engine. Because the, the ones in the States, they were only ever like, I think the 1.6 or 1.8, I can't remember now. Um, I, uh, yeah, I know it was, it was a 1.8. I don't the think they had a 2.5. They might have had a two five, but that's not very I efficient. I don't think. I mean, everyone at least I've seen on Craigslist. I, I think they're all manuals that I've seen, which is cool. Or maybe I just don't look for the don't remember yeah, the automatic don't ones. The other but ones I, I that was a very tempting car to purchase back when I wanted a car. Um, but it was also like there would be a lot of effort to make that actually fun because the the engine would be a huge letdown. Oh, they they're slow. Yeah. I one time saw a 318 IS, which is cool. It's an IS mm -hmm. E46 full full coupe. It was a four speed auto, and it was it was really nice. And I was like, mm -hmm. if you wanted a daily, and I was like, hmm. And I looked up a zero to sixty <laughs> video, and I think it's like thirteen seconds. It's pretty pathetic. Which for a Beamer, not like they're all supposed to be fast because they're not, but people yeah. think they are. Yeah, but it's yeah. it's like it's slow i mean that's not even like comparing to anything that is slow my golf is faster than that and it's a diesel like you yeah. know what i mean uh -huh. it's kind of rough okay shifting gears off of bmw because yes. we're talking too much about that i know i mentioned cadillac for the past two episodes okay however they released a bunch more information on the new the new v cars okay. so like the ct4 which is the baby ones replacing the ats mm -hmm. the ct4 v like we talked before, is kind of like an M Sport, like what we were just talking about. It's like a middle level. Yeah. It's kind of not super quick, but it's going to be there. And then they're going to have another one above that. Mm -hmm. Cadillac is really doing stuff that I wouldn't expect them to do. Like they came up with a new style of turbocharger design where what? it's kind of, it's not the whole design, but you know the twin scroll thing. Basically, yeah, yeah. you have two intakes that come off of it and they go next to each other and then it spins the internal vein at a you know different rates depending on rpm and that kind of thing and yeah, cylinder yeah. so i'm not going to get too much into it but basically instead of doing them next to each other and going uh -huh. into one side they're stacked and like 180 from each other what? because it makes the power smoother and it means the throttle response is made even better and there's very very little if any turbo lag which they're already almost getting rid of on new turbo cars mm -hmm. so they're doing that they've got like some new suspension design for the front which is not it's like a instead of having like one ball joint and it being uh, you know it's all independent stuff it's basically got two ball joints and it's a new design to kind of lighten what? it and i'm not going to go super okay. into it because there's way too much to just like briefly gloss over but it's it's new and it's different it's a change and basically it's like it makes it lighter and stiffer and you don't get the kind of like bounciness and kind of springiness that you get at speed going around corners mm -hmm. it just smooths it out but still keeps the feel doing stuff like that which you wouldn't expect them to do i, I want to read more about that i bet that there's some cool tech in that it's really cool they're using you know all this new stuff it's getting rid of slop and stuff on the front suspension uh -huh. um and again like the ct4 the v it has a four cylinder i'm pretty mm -hmm. sure if i'm right it has a four cylinder but it's just a high horsepower one and then like i said the uh the the other one will probably get like a twin charge v6 or something like that um it's also got stuff where it's like you know how start stopping cars is kind of rough like it, it's it's hard yeah. to get to work they've got all this stuff where it's it's like the starter will sit there and anticipate where the flywheel is so that if you're still rolling you know like if you do that kind of you stop briefly and go instead of mm -hmm. having the car like get like scared and then lurch and stuff like that yeah it just matches the rpm of the starter to the flywheel and then slit like slops it in and then kicks the engine <laughs> over so like it's it's That's it's kind of like rev matching before your starter mode but for your starter on your flywheel and stuff huh. like that then they also have like weird gimmicks which is kind of funny i just read a thing do you remember how all sobs have the night panel thing where you push a button and it turns panel? off all the lights apart from like the speedometer no. Because Saab's an airplane company, and they think that's cool, even though it's not really that necessary. Anyway, Cadillac's putting that in the new cars, too. It's a little cool, though. It's kind of cool. Nowadays, yeah, because there's so much tech in cars. You know, it's yeah. like the screen's always bright, you know, this, mm -hmm. this, and this. You can kind of really reduce it. I just sense. think it's funny how Saab had it in, like, the early 2000s, where there's, like, three gotcha. things on, you know? Yeah. But that whole thing. Those cars, I'm really excited to see them come out. The other thing is, like, I know we mentioned this before. I still can't get over the fact that 
CTS or sorry, the CT5 V is going to have like what is it? What do we say? 650 horsepower or something like that? God, and it's going to be 58k, which is a grand less than a Corvette C8, which has <laughs> 100 or like 200 horsepower less. I mean, it's it's going to be lighter the, you know. I know, but it's, that's it's a different class of car, but it's still ridiculous. It's insane. Like, again, I wasn't going to say value for money. I realize it's a lot of money. Yeah. I realize like, I can't afford any of these either. But of course. looking at it just, like, wholeheartedly, I suppose, value for money is pretty good. Considering the, BMWs are stupid expensive. The thing is, we, realistically, we'd be buying them on the used market in a yes. couple of years. But Hey, ATSVs are really cheap now. Yeah, I really want one of them. I think the Cadillac's going to drop value faster than mm-hmm. the Corvette. Yeah, so Corvettes always hold their value. It actually, it actually might even be a better deal to get that Cadillac. So Especially if you get it like you know three years off, just yeah. off lease kind of thing, where it still has warranty. Yeah. Again, like we mentioned one time, if you heard before, best time to buy a car, in my opinion, if you're looking for like mm-hmm. the new stuff. Yeah. Otherwise, wait till that thing is no value left in it. Go buy it <laughs> and do whatever you want to it. Like buying a, you know, fifteen or so year old BMW with two hundred eighty thousand miles. It's it could be fun <laughs> or not, depending on you know whatever you think you're doing. So, uh, last episode we had we're at the end of the episode as kind of our as kind of our outro thing. I put in a clip of us talking about this TikTok that I really wanted to find. <laughs> and you know, this is totally not car related, but uh, a friend of ours found it for us cuz I sent it to them and they just looked through their messages and found this video that I sent. And now I found it again and I saved it. So now it's with me forever. Good. And I have it. I'm glad you can save it. Would you like to see it? Yes. Just play it for me, because I... Just hold it up this direction. I can't do I, it's been... Let's put some volume on this bad boy. Alright. No, you don't fuck around. This is some fucking gas. Is it good? Dude, I would literally throw this on my bitch while I fuck her. That's how good this shit is. Is it good? It's so good. I told you. No, 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 no. <laughs> no you don't fuck around. <laughs> Is part, it good? Is it good? She's like, the mom's like, oh my god, I'm so happy to. I'm um, the dude in the background. <laughs> oh man, we need to link that if we. That'll be in some other video. That's gonna stay. That's just gonna keep coming up. It should be a theme. That's gonna be great. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, unrelated to that. Yeah. I love that TikTok. I keep playing the game of is my car aligned or is it windy? I've decided it's misaligned. Okay. It needs to get aligned. Okay. <laughs> That's all I'm getting at. I've just been. Is I keep my driving it. Car aligned or is it windy? Well, yeah, because it's a tiny golf, and it gets blown around in the on the prairie where I'm from, and then uh-huh. I go back to my parents' house, and I'm like, mm, eh. and then I realize it's like, no matter what direction I go down the highway, yeah. it's still turning, and I was <laughs> yeah. like, well, I haven't gotten in a line in like 15,000 miles, it's, and it's, it's not the bad, road's it? here. It's not bad, it's just like, mm. kind of annoying. Also, speaking of that kind of thing, why does my mom's Tiguan have a flat bottom steering wheel? I, I noticed know. that yesterday because I drove it to come what's, up and bring things here. What's the flat bottom for? I understand it in a race car where you're trying to get your legs in there and oh, everything's cramped. Well, Why do you need sense. that in a small to mid-sized crossover with well, seven it's seats? Like race sure inspired. But the thing is, I, she never notices. It doesn't have paddle shifters. My dad's Golf doesn't even have it. My dad has a Mark Seven Golf. My mom has a new Tiguan, whatever the Mark. I think it's Mark Two technically. Mm-hmm. I have a Mark Six Golf because I'm a college student. But we all have white Volkswagens. This is just my family. This is what we're doing now. Gang, gang. Yeah, I know. She wants a photo with all of them, actually. That'd be so, kind of funny. Yeah. That'd be cute. We'll figure it out. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I don't know why family it's got photo. a flat bottom. My dad's car has paddle shifters, though. It's pr- kind of cool. It, mm. And neither of them have a, a DSG, which is one thing on automatic transmissions. I've always had a thing where, for the longest time, it's like, why would I buy one? Yeah. Because they're real slushy and slow. They mm-hmm. never are in the gear you want them to be in. You know, slew of other things. They take economy. They do all this stuff. Yeah. The thing is, with the, what I've realized now is, for a long time, the only automatic type of gearbox I liked was Volkswagen's DSG mm-hmm. because it's always in the gear you need. It's so fast to shift, and yeah. they were really kind of the only ones that, you know doing that. Especially in Porsche's PDK, same kind of tech. Mm-hmm. Um, but that kind of gearbox and in the cars that I had driven, and then now both of their cars have torque converter automatics. Yeah. And they're almost as quick. It's really impressive to me that they're able to kind of stretch that tech. I mean, the new M5 is a normal automatic. I don't know if it's even stretching it. I think people were fucking around with the DSGs and double clutch and stuff, but they realized, like, if we just engineer this more, that regular automatic can take us pretty far. Yeah. And it's well, well good. It's... And I didn't think I'd say that, ever. Yeah. Again, the same thing. It's odd to say, because... 
God, some of those old automatics are garbage. Again, the Solera race car we have. It's it's the style where it's a four speed auto because it's a I think it's a two thousand or whatever. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's it works. It'll get the car up to one hundred and twenty down the back straight of Sebring. You yeah. know, it does its job and it sounds cool. But um, you take overdrive off, you're in the top three gears. But it's still the thing where you're flooring it into a corner, and as soon as you come off the gas, it goes, oh okay, economy, and shifts up to top gear. So whenever mm-hmm. you come out, you have to floor it like mid corner. So by the yeah. time you're coming out of the corner, it's kicked down into first or second. It's, I mean, the th- like for cars for a long time, they had those automatics, and it was it was good enough. You know what yeah. I mean? And and it's like. I hate to say this, but I feel like a lot of the people in the U.S. they want to drive all the way down the rev range. They they hate RPM. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they think like, oh, it's getting close to the red. That's bad. No, it's yeah. it's fine. It's, it's fine. where your it's power made is. to be it's that okay. way. And so um, I, I think everybody was okay with those kinds of transmissions, but now you know we want a little more. And and I think a lot of companies are really taking it that way. You know, yeah. and they they can shift really fast. And I mean, really, the operating principle. There's a bunch of clutches in automatic transmissions. There's yeah. a bunch of like little clutches that basically like engage and disengage, and you know shift the gears. And there's a giant like planetary gear set, and it just like kind of uh, does some mechanical magic. But it basically uses clutches to shift. It's mm-hmm. not intermeshing gears back and forth. So it could be very fast. And yeah. Obviously, it it is. You know, like, like the, the ZFs that BMW was using. I think they're still using them forever, those eight speeds. It, it has a skip built in. Mm-hmm. They're going to go from like fifth to third yeah. in one go. That's pretty cool. Instead of having it, because it's an eight speed. Instead of, if you're in top gear, you don't have to go eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. It just goes eight, seven, six, five, two, and yeah. then you go. That makes Something sense. like that. Mm-hmm. I could be wrong at the gears, but it, it is that kind of thing. And then, I don't know. They're really cool. Also, okay. Mm-hmm. I'm just going on subjects I'm remembering at this point. It's for things I've seen. <laughs> Did I ever send you the, the Genesis G90? like debut video i think i shared it with you one point uh i believe you might have yeah so a lot of car companies you may have seen them you may not have they do these they'll do these really long drawn out videos and it's normally like some kind of scene you know someone's in the case of the g90 it's a big premium car so you got like a chauffeur and whatever Mm -hmm. and they're trying to demonstrate oh look at all this new kind of tech especially Mm -hmm. hyundai they're really starting to lead in some of those places but you know they go oh you know even just safety stuff like lane keeping, blah, blah, blah. The one for the G90 was hilarious because you've got the chauffeur who just, in the video, Hyundai doesn't do anything kind of implicit with their videos. Mm-hmm. They're just full explicit. Like yeah. the chauffeur just falls asleep and then <laughs> drifts into the lane and then wakes up when the car like stops him and shakes it and does it all for him. Yeah. Like they're really just up front with it. It's super explicit. My favorite <laughs> one is I was watching one with the G80, the new one that just came out. Uh-huh. And they... they <laughs> It's like a guy and his girlfriend and one of the scenes are like going out to lunch. They put, you know, the girl's like, oh, can I drive or something on the way back? She like pulls out into traffic, almost get, almost gets fucking T-boned by like a BMW. Uh-huh. And then the car stops itself because, oh, she's a bad driver. But they're just <laughs> so like, it's just so they insane. to like for that woman equals bad driver. I was like, well, first of all, I didn't know that's how it was in South Korea. But apparently maybe it is. Okay. I just thought it was so funny because they just don't give a shit. They're like. They're demonstrating it works, which yeah. is great, but I just think it's funny. And then there's one point where she's coming up behind a cyclist, and the car's like, hey, there's something here, and she just, like, swerves all the way around it, like, really aggressively. What? It's really pretty entertaining and stuff like that. I've definitely seen some of those commercials, and it's like it's like a dude and his family. I don't know what, what manufacturers Any of them, but yeah. This dude and his family, and they're, like, on a road trip, and, like, everyone's laughing, having a good time, you know, in the car, like you do with your family. Yeah. And the... <laughs> and he like he starts like drifting out off you know like drifting out of his lane or something and the car like you know puts him back and then he's like oh yeah and then he goes to his family and it's like ah ha, 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 ha. like oh uh, the car you know made us not i was like dad you could have killed us yeah exactly and it's so lighthearted. yeah they go oh comedy like whatever <laughs> and fuck like, it I just love, like, like... How did we survive before this thing? I know, it's like, oh, everyone's an idiot. Like, whatever. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you replaced your old Chevrolet with this dad. You clearly couldn't handle it, because your last <laughs> old Chevrolet, you fucking T-boned this poor old woman, and now she's dead. <laughs> Haha, I'm glad you can't do that anymore, because this car drives for you. <laughs> Is that the message? Also, speaking of self-driving tech, and I was really upset and annoyed, like, two weeks uh-huh. ago. I got used to it in my mother's car. Yeah. It's, it's actually okay. It's <laughs> Some of it's like, okay, I know I was just being like a bitch and like going, I don't like it because it's yeah. different. And we were going like, yeah, that'll make them like they used to. Whatever. Yeah. Um, it's pretty good. Uh-huh. It's not perfect, but like, 
Um, my dad's car has all the lane keeping stuff. My mom's is like, nah, it doesn't have that. It has yeah. like the auto cruise though. Yeah. And it, it's nice because it's very, it's very relaxing to drive. Mm. Like, there's no fatigue in it, you know, which is good and bad. Cause like good. Cause it's like, you don't have to think you can relax, but then not good because you don't have to think cause you're relaxed. So yeah. if something does happen, yeah, you have yeah. to take control. You're like, oh shit. But I don't know, stuff like that. It's okay. But my dad's car will do that thing where it's like, it gives you these videos. I think I mentioned before, it's like, it'll show the golf, like driving on a road and then mm -hmm. swerving all over the line. And then mm -hmm. the car taking control and bringing you back into your lane really aggressively uh -huh. so that you don't T-bone or not T-bone, but front end someone and that kind of thing. Yeah. But going back to Hyundai, okay. sorry, that was just my little bit. I just like, it's okay. I can get around it. Uh -huh. But uh, for every brand in the U S if you want it, you have to have an automatic aside from Honda because mm -hmm. Honda realizes Overseas, they work in tandem all the time because most people have manual cars. Normally, if you're using that kind of system, you're on the highway, I think, is the thought process. That's what I've come to, not yeah, conclusion. That makes sense. So they leave it on there. Mm -hmm. But um, Honda has it now on the Accord, if you get the Sport one or whatever, yeah. which is actually a pretty nice, quick car. You can still get a manual. It's one of the few cars. Oh, cool. Um, it's front-wheel drive, but like they make good chassis. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, I digress. It has it on there, and all you have to do is basically, like, it'll tell you, hey, we're slowing down. You need to shift down a gear yeah. and if you dip the clutch to put it in gear and put it back the car will, car doesn't turn off cruise mm -hmm. it's like okay cool that's what i needed oh, thank you it's, it's pretty it's like uh, excuse me sir yeah i can't just, do this <clears throat> bit. can you uh, uh can you shift all right cool thanks. it's like Appreciate i need it. help <laughs> that's that's funny it's kind of cute actually <laughs> the i i i did honda's not my favorite car company not that there's uh -huh. anything bad with them i just personally i'm not huge into them but i do appreciate how they still try to keep manuals and stuff even like when they were um when they were coming out with their new uh hybrids and stuff i don't believe they do this anymore but they had manuals in their hybrids they did know that the uh the uh, oh man what's it called the CR insight the original insight was yeah and then the crz because it was supposed to be like a new version of the crx that had Civic. it too um, the Civic Hybrid, like the I think, first, was for a while. The first one. Um, yeah, right. it was like the same tech, but yeah. early on. And then the Civic, you could have it. I want to say on the new Insight, you could have it too. Mm -hmm. Not the brand new one, because that one's also same chassis. It's a Civic underneath. Yeah. I think that one's automatic only, because normally the people buying that I don't really think care. They've moved away from that. Yeah. But the way that they did it made a lot of sense for them to keep it as well. Yeah. I believe they put the electric motor right behind the yeah. engine, and so and I think it was also like the starter or something. Yeah, it's kind of like the Prius and where... it just went into the transmission like normal, and so mm -hmm. they could put a manual there, and it worked fine, and I was like... Yeah, it didn't matter. That's really cool. Like, it's I mean, a good way not? to... Like, that's, and they were the only people that did it, you know? And yeah, so, for the longest time. The only hybrid manual, right? As far as I know, yes. I mean, unless there's stuff overseas that we're not getting, or little cars yeah. that we're not getting, then maybe. But as far as I know, they're kind of the only company who's done that. And then now, you know, everyone's trying to do stuff in the drivetrain or in the back mm -hmm. or, like, have two drive, you know, modes and, like, you know, motors yeah. in the back, engine in the front. Uh, you know, Volvo does a combination of all these things because they've got their tiered engine system, which I think is really impressive. I know we've mentioned that before. Yeah. Um, the, and that kind of thing. Honda's but. done a few things throughout their lifetime to be, like, I almost like Honda. <laughs> See, I, <laughs> yeah, I like think them. about it a few times and I'm like, ah, oh, you're so close. I don't know if it's this with you. Respect, I like Honda. You know? <laughs> I like what they... Well, yeah, exactly. I like Honda. I like what they make. I like uh -huh. their products. I don't like the people who drive them. That's probably more of it. Than and anything. I think that's what it is. Especially, it's the problem with the whole Ricey Civic thing. That's yeah. really where it stems from. And even Accords. <laughs> We've seen some around here. Yes. But the problem is when those people take those cars and do it, it's like, oof. The issue with all of that is the fact that if you take a Civic and put some parts on it it's a really good handling front wheel drive chassis they mm -hmm. always have been yeah but then I mean, if you drive that you look an idiot because everyone people don't care about cars look at that and go ricer or whatever in yeah. some comment and then move on even people who are into it you just go oh, it's a honda yeah but actually no we saw that one hatchback and even you were like that's pretty cool this is like it's, a few weeks ago i don't know if you remember i, I, was I like, feel like i almost hate it because i feel like i have to you know what i mean well here how about this whenever we get our civic set up for lemons we already have one okay well, we've got another one coming you drive that you tell me what you think <laughs> then we'll make a decision we'll oh, revisit damn. this episode in, <laughs> in an amount of time that I mean, car they are great on a truck i don't know I, I, there I mean, are better maybe, cars but. i think i mostly have an issue with civics yeah <laughs> i don't know if it's honda's because there are honda cars that are like of course the nsx 
great. Well, yeah. The S2000. Yeah, great. It's... Really expensive, but it's a good car. The um, Do you like the Type R? The, like, the Integra? Stuff, Either. Or... Integra or Civic is the same car. Uh, it's just a faster... Take it or leave it? Civic, yeah. Just, nah. I don't know. It's Would you have a Golf thing. or something over that? Because it's like, it's Type R, Golf, mm, GTI, or R. I'm not quite sure what the power is. Veloster N. You know. I'd probably go Hyundai, I think. I mean, I would, too. I think it's just interesting. <laughs> I yeah, just I'd probably like do Golf doing. over it as well. I just, like, I think some of the Civics, like the newer ones, they come, like, looking really edgy. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm like, I could have less of that. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, on one I mean, of those things. They don't look bad. It's just, like, I think they're trying too hard to look really edgy. And That's just, like, the... Th- eh. And I like kind of that attitude. When they came out, I was like, that's cool. That's different. Because I didn't like... It just had the shape of, like, the hump. And they mm-hmm. weren't that good looking. Like, Aslan's car. It, yeah. it looks it looked good at the time. It just didn't age super well. Mm-hmm. But um, I liked how they were doing something different. And then um, the the problem was, like... Like you said, it's, like, a little edgy. And then you look at it, and it's, like, a 1.6 with, like, you know, steel wheels with hubcaps and that kind of thing. Mm. But they're cool. The other thing is they took the Insight, and the new Insight is basically a Civic chassis, but it just looks more premium. And they've they've softened a lot of those lines. Hmm. If you look at them next to each other, you go, that is the same chassis. Also, but I like the new... Yeah, check it out. But I like the way the new Insight looks. Okay. I think it's a good-looking car, just on its own, not even for being a Honda. Mm-hmm. And then um, we just mentioned the Veloster N. We keep, I keep coming back to Hyundai. Apparently, this is kind of car news, along with the other thing about Cadillac. But um, they're looking to bring back... I think the name Santa Cruz was used for a car for a while. However, I know the Santa Fe was. But yeah. they're looking to bring... I'm not sure if it's confirmed, but it looks like they're trying to do a Honda Ridgeline type of pickup with the Santa Fe, Ooh. which they're trying to make this kind of cool looking pickup, but based on one of their architectures they already have. And they're kind of going with the premise of like, okay, you want to carry stuff, but it's not that heavy and you want a truck yeah, and it'll be cheap. It's, it's something they already make. They just cut the end off of Santa Fe. And the Santa Fe is a really good That's looking good car. good idea. I mean, like... To me, anyway. Good on Honda. It's the small trucks. Like, they kind of don't really exist anymore. Even no. the even the small, quote-unquote, small trucks are still, like, midsize in my mind. Yeah, they're pretty big. Know? And so it's like, you. I feel like there's not a lot of people making that. And no. that's, that's a... I don't know. I see them all the time. Like, older, small trucks. People love them. It's they're good on gas. Old, yeah. And they, you know, a lot of times you don't need a haul around that much. Well, it's also the only thing people can buy, so they'll keep buying the old ones. Yeah. <laughs> and my dad, like I said, he loved the Ranger and got upset when they stopped making it in 2011. Mm-hmm. Even though it was the same truck they've been making since, like, the 80s, basically. Yeah. It was a good chassis. Mm-hmm. And then I'm just looking back at my nose that um, mm-hmm. the um, that video I was talking about with the Genesis, the new G80, I also yeah. remembered it's got self-parallel parking. And what okay. I mean by that is you can walk away from the car and it'll do it. I haven't seen that. I've seen the straight on parking. Yeah. yeah. But like you can park, you like pull up next to the thing, hop out, and it'll reverse itself into a parallel spot that's and turn itself sweet. off. That's cool. I'd feel like a G if I did that. Yeah, that's awesome. Are you kidding me? Because you know it's like I, it's I'd, self I'd like the car to like still be moving a little bit, and then I just walk out <laughs> and just walk away, and then it just, just... parks. <laughs> <laughs> and, and someone's in the corner is like, oh, excuse me? And, and then I'm like... It just... Oh, it's on. fine. Yeah, what? You don't know Genesis <laughs> like I do. So just flash your... He's like, oh my god. That's a commercial right there. That is... That's marketing. There you go. There you go. I'll do some of that. I'll try to get a job with Hyundai. <laughs> Unfortunately, the headquarters yeah, in California, which is you, expensive. I want you to contact Hyundai and be like, can we borrow one of those? I have an idea for a commercial. They're like... Could you sponsor the Uninteresting Car Show? Yeah, please? could you sponsor one episode for us just so we can make this commercial? I'd love to do that. That'd be great. Hopefully more people start listening to this. Hey, if you haven't, think about subscribing to our YouTube Spread channel as well. Spread it around, you know? Put it, um, on, your, you know, put it on your a vlog. What, on whatever. your vlog? <laughs> you sound like a boomer. You sound like my father. FaceTube and things like that, he says. Mm. Um, this is also unrelated. I'm just looking at my notes at this point because I want to make Fair sure enough, we yeah. go through all the things that we missed before. So, new C8 Corvette. Okay. Obviously, that's out. I was very excited. Mm -hmm. Still am. But um, almost more excited for the Cadillac, not going to lie. However, um, what someone has done, and I don't remember who, unfortunately, I think they're starting to document it. It's still just in the first processes of doing this. They're doing an engine swap on them. Do you want to guess what they're putting into it? I just... Hold on. Give me a second. Yeah. I just like 
It's already got an LS in it, right? Yes. Well, so you basically, can't yeah. LS swap it? No. <laughs> I mean, you could. Uh, the logical thing would be to put turbochargers on it, because then it would be super pro- Is it like a Ferrari engine? No. Also, before we move on, Hennessy's doing a twin turbocharged one. That one already makes a ton more power on the base one. Of course, Hennessy's <laughs> doing it. No, they're putting a four rotor rotary in it. That's a good. That's good. Yeah. That's, a, that's a cool thing to that's, put in there. Yeah. God, it's, it's going to be really light, right? It's pretty light for what it is. I think a lot of it's like aluminum and you know magnesium and other non steel metals and <sighs> that's carbon very fiber. Cool. I want to follow that, and we'll, we'll come up with to, more yeah. stuff like that. Wow, that'd be neat. I remember seeing. I, I'm gonna have to look it up, but someone did. Okay, so they have the three rotors, and I remember in a previous episode you were surprised that the three rotors are a factory thing. Yes, and it was just in that car. I saw, but it was a turbocharged three mm-hmm. um, three rotor. But I saw it was a it was some hill climb video of an RX7 with a three rotor that was naturally aspirated, but it still made like a lot of power. Wow. And I'm like, did you take that three rotor? And make it naturally aspirated and, like, increase the compression somehow? Or is this some, like, bespoke thing? Or did you take a two-rotor that was naturally aspirated and, and, add, another. and then add somehow add another rotor? I don't know. But I was huh. so curious. I was like, why? one, why? <laughs> two, awesome. That's really cool. <laughs> but also three, why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, did you some take the, the stuff they do off to do make this... less? I don't know. The stuff they do for that hill... Actually, yeah, if you're at altitude, why would you not keep the... Turbo on it. I think it. it was some kind of hill climb. I'm thinking of like Pikes Peak stuff. Yeah, I don't Which know again, if it was Pikes that. Peak. Yeah. There's the stuff that comes out of that's cool. Like the Gen Coupe Hyundai made for that. And I think they won the year they did it. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. It was something like a real bored out one of their uh, Lambda RS V6s that they put in those cars. I think it was like a 4.3 liter, which is already a 3.8. It's a big V6. Yeah. Before three is even bigger. And it that's made like huge. I think oh four God. or five hundred horsepower or something. And then they had a real lightened chassis and threw it up the mountain, and it went very well. What was that? Sorry, that, was, that was a lot of chuff, but in a very... Okay. Naturally aspirated 20B triple rotor, producing 520 horsepower. Jesus Christ. How? How does That's it make that That's some tight tolerances. Much? I bet those Apex seals oh lasted the two runs it did. It <laughs> probably lasted half of those. Okay, just... just we heard a very brief clip of some very in, intense choppitude. No way, that's not real. <laughs> Look at the wing on that too, it's huge. Oh my god. You know what that sounds like? I can recreate it. <laughs> it doesn't sound like a car. No, it doesn't. It sounds like a meme, like those ones where people go, meow, or they exactly. go make fun of Hondas and Let's stuff like that. Let's skip to where it's going. Oh, that was like a That brand. sounds like an RC car, is what that sounds like. That's like an F1! Oh my god. Alright. So cool. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, to play us out that kind of sound, I think we're going to cut it off there. Are we already at time? Uh, yeah, we're already oh at... Oh my god. I think we're already at time. I could be wrong, but I think I, we're already at time. We'll probably have a few more minutes, but yeah, we, we don't have anything else. Oh, do you have anything else? Oh, really? It's kind of a chill day. Not much is going on. It's a chill day. I dropped half my classes. I'm fucking thriving. It's cool. I, uh, it's not cool. Been learning how to sharpen knives or something. That sounds sinister. No, what have you actually been doing with a rope? Well, okay. That also I've sounds been doing sinister. Both. <laughs> D- knives Tell the viewers. And ropes and, you know. No, but I, you I like made, that Rihanna song? made a rope dart. What is that? It is a it is a martial art, a Chinese martial arts weapon. Um... <laughs> It's basically a dart at the end of a long rope, and you like swing it around and do some shit. I don't know. It, I saw a video, and I was like, "That's really cool. I want to make one of them and practice using it." And now I made one, and it's really hard to use, but <laughs> it's also fun. But also, you hit yourself a lot, and it hurts. But, if you know. any of you listening have ever watched Kill Bill, I believe it's only in Volume One you'd have to watch. But if I think her name was Gogo, uh-huh. she had the it was a chain instead with like the um, mace on the end of it. Yeah, it's basically that, but it's rope. Apparently, that is an actual thing. I thought it was just a movie prop, but uh, until David told me a, about this, I didn't realize it was ancient, that kind of thing. Ancient martial arts. Ancient weapon. martial arts. Yeah. I was gonna say anything interesting I've been doing. Well, I've got to edit more beam videos, more automation videos, mm-hmm. which are coming out soon. Exciting. If you haven't seen the one that we just released, please do watch it. I find it quite entertaining, but maybe that's just me. Share it to all your friends. Um, we'll be doing more of that kind of stuff. We've got kind of a special coming up for the 10th podcast, Ooh. though it's your own milestone. 
Not like we're at a subscriber milestone necessarily yet, but <laughs> hey, it's something cool we want to try out. We'll tell you how it goes. You know, uh, I would suggest watching that one on YouTube because it's going to be a bit of a different format, but we will also release a audio version. So keep that in mind. That'll be coming in the next week or two. Um, more automation videos, stuff like that. We've got the Volkswagen Beetle stuff, which we're going to start working on kind of as we wind down for the semester and we get some more people into it. So that's coming soon. So much good stuff. So um, I guess we'll cut it off there, but thank you very much for listening. Um, we'll catch you next week. Follow us on Instagram at Uninteresting Cars. I'm trying to remember to do all the plugs. Like, subscribe, share, <laughs> uh, turn on notification Disgusting. bell, put it wherever. Oh, we got to do some kind of vamping, you know. Hey, it doesn't cost anything, so <laughs> tell your friends. Thank you very much for listening. We'll catch you next week. I'm Jacob. I'm David. Goodbye. That's so funny. Okay. Now I know what David's being fake. <laughs> There's a real one. Do you? It's like, oh, would you like some stoli? Ha ha ha! Fuck yeah, I would like some of that. That sounds delicious. <laughs> that's that's the fake Hillary Clinton thing. Charming. Charming, madame. Oh, fucking Nissan kicks pulled up. I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs>